Coach, I mean, talk about the, the big plays. Hurt you against Montana. You guys still came out on top. Hurt you guys again this week. And just kind of talk about you know, how frustrating that is or, I mean, what in your mind leads to these big plays that end up hurting you guys so much? Well, I think, number one, they, this week they were running the football. Last week they were throwing the football. So we've gotten it for both ends on the defensive side of the ball. And really, the first one, two guys hit him. They just didn't wrap him up, so it was poor tackling. At the point of attacker, he would have had one yard. And the young man did a good job keeping his balance, and he ran well. And I think that's the other part of the issue when people talk about winning and losing. You know, the other team doesn't want to lose either. <laughs> you know, maybe some credit sometimes needs to be given to your opponent in their victory. I mean, I'm not good on losing and things like that, but Texas State's a pretty good football team. Kind of update us on the injuries. Um, list seems to be growing a little bit. You know, I have to sit up here every week and say that it's a part of the game. Unfortunately, I think that we've had more than our share in the two years that I've been here. But it's a fact of life and it's a fact of this game that you have to deal with, you know, where you are and who you I mean, we traveled three safeties to that game. And on the first play of the game, Angel Morales got hurt, the guy that was starting at safety. So we were playing, we played the rest of the game with two safeties. And that's not a good position to be in, and especially in what we're doing on defense. So it made it uh, pretty difficult, but uh, I think our players responded well, and we're going to have more injuries. Uh, Maurice McClure is injured. Giovanni Sani's out for the year. How Kelly is still out for two to three more weeks. We'll know more about Greg Francis as this week progresses. Uh, there's six, seven, eight guys. James Chen didn't travel. I mean, we're playing without six or seven starters, and I think that that's a great credit to the guys on our football team that are playing that uh, we're able to continue to be successful and play hard and do the things that we want to do on offense and defense despite the injuries we've had or in spite of them. How do you guys regroup and, and get back on track this week as far as practice and, and everything like that? Well, there's two things that I've found out. Wins stay with players longer than they stay with coaches, and losses stay with coaches longer than they stay with players. And the one thing I know is that as coaches, we got to realize that we need to move on because I think our players are ready to move on. They don't want to dwell on the loss. And I think we need to correct. We made corrections this morning on the field. I think our players were alert and attentive at 640 this morning. And I think they did a good job in the conditioning aspect. We did an introduction to McNeese State. So with the exception of the press conference I do today and the radio show I do tomorrow night, I'm not going to answer too many more questions about Texas State. We're going to move on as a football team, go play an excellent football team in McNeese State and get a win on the road. Just update us on the quarterback situation, if you will. The situation still exists, let me put it that way. I guess that's the best way I can put it, is that we have three guys that uh, feel very comfortable with. Tony has not been cleared to play. I mean, he can play an emergency role, but he's not cleared to, to go out and be the guy, let's put it that way. So is he in the mix? We'll see how the week progresses with him and what his role will actually be as we get further into the week. You know, and I'll just say it again. We have three guys that if we can combine all the good things that they do, we'd have the perfect guy. And I don't know really if there is a perfect guy out there at the quarterback position at any level. I mean, I'm sure that the Patriots, which Tommy Brady was a little bit more mobile. I mean, there's a lot of things that you can say about the quarterback position. But in reality, we have three guys that do certain things really well. And uh, we're going to have to make a decision on which guy fits what McNeese State does or what we think McNeese State's going to do. And then we'll probably go with that guy as the week progresses. But right now, I'm not in a position where uh, that guy is going to be named and probably until Wednesday night. Coach, yeah, the, the quarterback situation, it, it's kind of evolved into now a, a kind of three-horse race, um, provided that Tony's been clear. I mean, can a team be successful when you have such uncertainty? I mean, you know, typically it's two guys, but three guys, it seems like it becomes kind of a, kind of almost a mess. I, I don't know. What, what, well, with three guys, the reason we have three guys is because of the injuries. <laughs> That's the only reason we have three guys playing the position right now. I mean, really, Tony and Andre both sat out about five practices for Tony and 10 to 12 practices for Andre which made it muddled. There's no question that that's what it did. And I hate to say anything, the guy that was the third guy played very well against the University of Montana, and there was a lot of people waving the flag saying, Doug Shumway, you know, and now we have three guys, and we lost. So now all of a sudden not everybody's waving, waving the Doug Shumway flag because we lost. I mean, that's the way it goes, I guess, with fans. And, you know, people can look into things any way they want. We're going to play the guy that's going to give our team the best opportunity to win. If it means play all three of them to win a football game, we'll play all three of them to win a football game. And really – and that's the one position I feel pretty stable about as far as whoever plays, I think, can be successful. We've heard the kicking situation where you go, if you miss two, the next guy comes in. Is that how it is for quarterback? I mean, you have a bad series, bad quarter. Is it just going to be flip-flopping? No, I think if we have, I think if we have a bad uh, start to a football game, then two or three possessions are gone. And we think the quarterback's having something to do with it, or sometimes maybe it'd be a spark. But, you know, I've never been in a situation where I've done it. So, I mean, it's going to be it's news to me, and it's new to me. 
And uh, the, rea the reality is it's a situation we're in, and we're going to do whatever it takes. And I think, you know, I I'll give a perfect credit to Jake West since you brought up the kickers because, you know, here he is. He gets sat down against Montana, and the young freshman gets an opportunity. The young freshman kicks the first one and kicks it dead left. Jake comes hit and hits two right down the middle. That's what we're looking for from a response. When somebody has the opportunity to play, you respond and you take the, the opportunity to give yourself the upper hand and say, hey, I should be the kicker. And Jake did a great job of doing that the other night, and hopefully he'll keep performing that way because we've given up points in each of the last two games. And you take a field goal in that game, and it's 21 to 15. Now that last possession isn't a panic to get in and kick an onside kick. That possession's to win the game. So we have to make kicks. And there was a pretty strong win behind that 44-yarder. Just so I say, that 44-yarder was really what I would say is a 34-yarder. So we got to make them. That's, this is college football. In college football, you should make 34-yard field goals. In your interview with Tom here after the game, you uh, emphasized the mental mistakes in the game. Mm -hmm. uh, how disappointing three games into the year to have those mental mistakes come up? Well, part of it has to do with what Texas State did. Like I said before, you have to give credit to them. Some of the mistakes were because, you know, we also only get two days to prepare for what we think we're going to see from an opponent. And at some point in time, you argue when you're used to seeing certain fronts, which we saw in the first couple of weeks, and all of a sudden it's completely different the third week, you may have some breakdowns. But we're going to learn from those breakdowns, and I think it's been a great learning day already. Um, I'm disappointed because some of the players that made mistakes were veteran players, and you don't expect them from, from some veteran players. Uh, so in that respect, from an assignment standpoint, we got to get them corrected. And we had some young players make mistakes that were costly too, but uh, those ones you can look at and say, okay, they lack maybe the experience, and they're definitely going to grow up because they made the mistake. The older guys should not happen. But unfortunately in this game, there's guys getting paid a lot of money to make mistakes. With the team having um, a lack of success on the road and with such a daunting road trip, you know, five straight games on the road, I mean, it, it's going to be pointed out that the team – you know, has not won in a long time. I mean, are guys pressing? Is it, does it become – guys start to feel it, coaches start to feel it until you guys win on the road? Well, I can honestly say I'd like to be in a visiting team locker room and feel what it feels like to win a football game here at Cal Poly because I haven't done that yet. And I'm sure our players would like to do that as soon as possible too. I've never met a team that did not want to win on a Saturday. So, you know, our guys are giving it everything they have. I think our coaches are coaching hard. I think we've made some adjustments in how we travel that we think have helped. But uh, the reality of the situation is that, you know, we need to play better on the road. And on the road, it is no place to start slow. We had a tremendous opportunity to have 14 points in the first quarter and didn't take advantage of any of the field position we have. And when we're playing on a short field, 21 and 25 yard fields, with what we run on offense, it should be right up our alley. And unfortunately, we went six plays and got three points in those two situations. And if add 11 points to our total and see who had more points. And I think that our players need to understand that we need to come out and come out fast. And again, credit Texas State because they did some things maybe that were unexpected that took us a while to adjust to. And I think we did make great adjustments in the second half. And I think our players responded to those adjustments very well. But uh, they made us play long, long-term football. It wasn't going to—they were not going to give us any big plays. Credit them for that. We expected some big plays out of Mark Rogers, and we may still get some. I think he has 12 yards in the last two games. Went negative last game. Is there something that you can pinpoint which is causing a lack of success with him on, on the ground? Yeah, the opponent. <laughs> we, don't play, we don't run plays where we block plays on the perimeter. The ball gets to the perimeter because of what the defense does. And when it gets there, the two guys blocking on the perimeter need to do a better job. We're not blocking the perimeter very well, and therefore the guy doesn't look like he's you know, going to be. You know, but he is explosive. I think Dave Marr is a good player, and we want to get those guys the ball in open space. But we have to do a better job in our triple option game on the perimeter against some of the things we're seeing that are maybe some different things than people have done. You know, the one thing about uh, if you look at successful programs across the country, including Air Force, Navy, Georgia Tech, and teams that run the triple option, Army, is that, you know, the reality is you can play the game between the tackles. That's great. But if you do that, you better be willing to go 12 and 13 plays for drives for touchdowns. And we were able to have some long drives the other night, but they didn't result in touchdowns. And I think to have the explosiveness on the outside is a necessity, but it's something if you try to force it, you're going to really blow the offense up. And the ball is going to be on the ground, and really bad things are going to happen. So when we get it there, the ball needs to be, the, the perimeter needs to be um, blocked better, so that the player has the opportunity to do what he can do best. And then in Mark Rogers' case, that's running open space. I think he has ten carries in, in two games. Would you like to get him the ball more? Or has it just been that it just hasn't been there? That option to get him the ball just hasn't been there the last two games. It, it's an offense where you don't say he's going to get twenty. I didn't go into the game saying that the fullback position was going to have twenty carries and the quarterback position was going to have thirty-one carries. 
you can't go into it that way. You need to be prepared for that to happen by what the defense does. But sure, we'd like to get in the ball more. But our offense is designed whatever they do, we make decisions off of what they do. And for the most part, our quarterback made pretty good decisions for the most part. McNeese State, talk about them. Uh, I know you have a little bit, but uh, athletic, we hear, you know, long road trip. Just talk about the, the, the opponent this week. Well, all our road trips are going to be long. So, I mean, that's just <laughs> the nature of the beast, and we got to deal with it. And, you know, uh, so uh, them as a team, as a football team, a football program, just look at what they've done the last 10, 11 years. They're the University of Montana, the Southland Conference. They're going to have 22,000 people there. It's a tremendous atmosphere to play in. Uh, it's a fun atmosphere to play in. I thought Texas State did a good job of that as well. The Southland Conference, I think athletically, is one of the most athletic conferences in FCS football. And the McNeese State team is probably the top of that list. Uh, they're going to be athletic at every position. They're going to be skilled, very, very skilled. And they're going to be big. And on defense, check out their front four. All four of those guys are predicted to be all-conference players in the preseason. Two of them are returning first-team all-conference players. So we got our work cut out for us against a very good football team and probably a hostile environment. But it's a tremendous opportunity, I think, that uh, – like we're challenging our football team and challenging ourselves as a football program that, hey, we had a bad weekend last weekend. Texas State had a great weekend. They won. They had more points than we had. But the reality of the situation is it's given us ourselves an opportunity to make a tremendous comeback and come back and show what kind of football Cal Poly is ready to play for 2010. It sounds like it's a good – I know you don't want to look ahead, but it sounds like it's a good environment to test your guys in before you go – you know, you go east. There is one short road trip this year. Is that is it going to be a good place for you guys to to, uh, to go out on the road and before that the Fresno game? Well, I haven't given it much thought. I mean, I'm not giving that much thought. I mean, Fresno State's Fresno State. I'm sure our guys playing in interstate California school will be excited to play in that environment. I think our players have been there for the most part. The guys that have played have played at Montana. They've played places. Uh, you know, this place is going to be very similar to those places, and uh, it's going to be a great college football environment, and they're a great college football program, so it'll be a great test for us this Saturday night. Tim, what's the strength of your team right now? Well, I'd like to say coaching, but <laughs> just kidding. On the field. <laughs> I, I really feel like, you know, the, the, strength, the strength of our team is exactly the words you said. I said, we're not going to out-athlete anybody. We're going to out-team people. And I think we have tremendous young people playing this game. And I think to have young people that are as directed and as uh, interested in being as good as they can be, and that's all you can ask of a football team. That's the thing, how we play, how hard we play. And our players need to understand that we're not going to be more athletic than McNeese State. I'll flat out tell you, I told them that this morning. But does that mean we can't be a better football team than McNeese State? We'll find out. I think the strength of our team is the character of the young people that play on, play on our team. I really do. And I believe that when I got here, and I still believe it today, that we have tremendous young people playing football here and playing sports in general. Listen to those young people when they get in front of a microphone. What better representatives of university as an athletic department do we have than the young people that are in it? here at Cal Poly, and I really believe that it's the strength of our team.